My name is Claudia Alexandra Paras, and I work with Puget Sound Sage. It's an organization that works with labor, faith, and community to ensure that all this wealth, all this wealth in our region is dispersed to all families and not just the 1%. Oh, really? So we stand with you today in solidarity as you fight to keep important services such as Nicholsville, wheel and share in place. Hey. These are the safety nets that everyone needs to have access to and our governments need to provide. And from what I've been listening to today, it sounds like this committee is more important with data collection. It's prioritizing what's on paper instead of really asking who should be at the table and listening to those voices. Did I hear that right? I was making sure I was listening today. So it's a listening rally. So the connection I'd like to make is that I work with airport workers at SeaTac Airport who rely on social services like DSHS because they are paid minimum wage jobs with no benefits. So similarly, because on paper they have a job, the assumption is that they're doing okay and they're not a vulnerable population. But that's not the case. We know that minimum wage doesn't cut it. People need to make a livable wage. They need to have money to support their families and their kids and to buy the basic necessities. I work with workers like cabin cleaners like Samar who clean Alaska Airline airplanes and are expected to clean an 800 person airline craft in one hour with two people on her shift. I don't know about you but that is a lot of hard work for nine dollars an hour and it is backbreaking work. When her children were sick she had no insurance to help her with a visit to the doctor and you know how expensive that can be. Hosea Wilcox is another worker who for 31 years was paid minimum wage for his job as a sky cap attendant. And those are the jobs of the folks who check in your luggage right at the curb. For Delta Airlines, he worked 31 years nurturing this job and was then fired when Delta contracted his job out to another company. He was not hired back for a job he had nurtured for 31 years. Samar and Jose are just a few of the workers at SeaTac Airport whose working conditions and struggles are invisible to the thousands of people who go through the airport every day. So today in solidarity, as I was listening to your stories, I wanted to give voice to their stories alongside yours because it's a similar struggle of how when what we need for families to survive. These are workers who, ha who help airline companies make huge profits, huge profits, and yet they are living in vulnerable and unstable conditions. Right now they are dependent on social services and they are fighting for a fair, livable wage that will allow them to thrive. As we stand with you today, we ask you to stand with the airport workers and their fight to get Alaska Airlines and the Port of Seattle to share the wealth to share the prosperity and give the 99% what they deserve.